Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for clicking on to another one. I really appreciate that. Hope you've been enjoying the content we've been putting out here on this channel. We've had a lot of fun making it and we're gonna continue to do so. So you might as well subscribe, become a part of the family, hang out with us on Discord, do whatever you wanna do. I'm done plugging. I got something important to talk to you about today. Supplement myths. They're everywhere. We're gonna tackle three big ones that I hear all the time that I've heard since when I started working out up until even yesterday i work at a gym a commercial gym and so we hear myths flying every which way all the time today i'm gonna do my best to break those myths down to hopefully give you some evidence as to why they're true or not true and get you a little bit more educated on the science of supplementation so that you can make an educated decision whether or not supplementation of these nutrients is something that you want to do before we get started a couple quick caveats you know i gotta take care of the legal side of things we don't want to get sued now do we okay number one supplementation is never a must do it is never necessary right think of the word supplement to add on to something right so you should be getting nutrients through your diet through the food and beverages that you consume if you feel like you're lacking in something you can supplement. If you feel like you want to try the benefits of something, you can supplement. So when we talk about creatine or when we talk about protein supplementation, don't think that I'm saying you must do this or you're never going to grow or you're never going to lose weight. No, these are just tools in the tool bag. This is something you can employ if you feel comfortable doing it. Caveat number two, contrary to popular belief, science is never settled. Okay. It is a series of experimentation, hypothesis, experiment, coming to conclusions, right? So I'm going to go off of the evidence base that we have right now, 2021, right? Things may change five years, 10 years down the line, but where we are right now, I'm going to try and do my best to keep it current, to utilize research that we know has a solid evidence base that is in a peer reviewed journal, right? So nothing that I say is completely set in stone, but I am doing my best to present to you ideas that have the strongest evidence base that I could find. I want this information to be solid. I want you to be able to take this and use it as your foundation in your fitness journey, okay? With all that being said, with my ass thoroughly covered, nobody sue me, nobody get mad at me in the comments. I've done my caveats. Let's move on to myth number one. Okay, myth number one, creatine is a steroid, man. Let me tell you what, coming up, I started working out around 2011 as cross training for football in high school. And I remember the craze of creatine being a steroid. It was everywhere, early on everybody, mothers, fathers, oh, my son's not on creatine. My daughter's not gonna be on creatine, that's a steroid. Let me put this one to bed right now. Creatine is a naturally occurring substance. You can find it in red meats. You can find it naturally occurring in the human body, okay? Not an anabolic steroid. Don't worry, right? So with that squash, let's talk a little bit more about creatine because you may think, okay, it's not a steroid, but is it safe for me to take? So creatine supplementation increases the level of creatine in our muscles, obviously. Now that higher level of creatine will help inhibit creatine breakdown in the muscle, which basically just means that you're getting higher energy in short-term intense bouts of exercise. So like a set of 10 on the bench press, right? You'll be able to push past that boundary of seven, eight, nine reps and finish strong with 10 with an increase in creatine. Obviously that's a very basic explanation of what creatine actually does. If you want a more scientific view, if you want more information, a lot of these papers that I've talked about will be linked in the description. You can go ahead and check out the actual mechanisms of creatine down in the description, right? So we know what it does, is it safe? One of the best papers that I've found on the adverse effects of creatine supplementation was published in 2000 in the Journal of Sports Medicine, right? Basically, again, I'm going to link the paper down below, but one key point that I'd like you to bring your attention to. Liver and kidney dysfunction have also been suggested on the basis of small changes in markers of organ function and of occasional case reports, but... Well-controlled studies on the adverse effects of exogenous creatine supplementation are almost non-existent. I don't know about you guys, but that is enough evidence for me. Again, I will link this paper down below if you want to dive deeper. But first and foremost, creatine is not a steroid. If somebody comes to you and tells you that it's a steroid, let them know that you can find it naturally occurring in red meat and in the human body. 
Two, it's a great supplement. It's one of the most researched supplements that we have, one of the most researched ergogenic aids that we have. And so I have found personally some great, great effects of creatine. I've been supplementing creatine for the past three, maybe four years, and I have seen a marked difference between when I am supplementing it and when I'm not supplementing it. I feel like it just gives me that little edge to finish off the set and get a quality workout in, okay? So that's myth number one. Hopefully that one's busted sufficiently for you. Let's move on to myth number two. Myth number two, caffeine taken pre-workout will give you a heart attack. Oh boy. I mean, I definitely see where this one comes from. Who among us has not taken a little bit too much coffee in the morning and your heart starts fluttering and oh my God, I'm going to go into cardiac arrest. Why did I drink that second cup? I get it. So when you pair that type of effect of taking caffeine with a high stimulus workout where your heart is beating already, you're getting into the 150, 160 beats per minute. I can see where people would think that maybe if I take caffeine, I'm going to push myself into cardiac arrest. Now, there is definitely some truth to this. We have to be careful. If we're pushing the caffeine boundaries past the recommended dose of at maximum 400 milligrams per day, we can get into some trouble, right? We've all seen the TikTok videos, the dumb kids dry scooping pre-workout, taking 800 milligrams of caffeine and washing it down with a bang energy. Next thing you know, they're in the hospital. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is adults, correctly utilizing caffeine for its ergogenic aid properties, taking it pre-workout at the 150 to 300 milligram range and having a strong workout without any cardiac repercussions. Is it even worth it? Is caffeine supplementation even worth it? Well, a paper that I have found from the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition says, Yes, supplementation with caffeine has been shown to acutely enhance various aspects of exercise performance in many, but not all studies. Small to moderate benefits of caffeine include, but are not limited to, muscular endurance, movement velocity, muscle strength, sprinting, jumping, and throwing performance, as well as a wide range of aerobic and anaerobic sport specific actions. So it seems to me like it could be something that you could consider utilizing and the benefits have a solid evidence base. Now, will it kill you. So caffeine supplementation may be something that you want to consider, right? Let's talk about side effects very quickly. It probably will not give you a heart attack. Obviously, check with your doctor before starting any type of supplementation or any type of exercise regimen for that matter. We want to make sure we don't have any pre-existing conditions, anything that can give us some trouble. Once we're free and clear, we got the doctor's signature. I think based on my reading of the evidence that you should be safe supplemented caffeine as long as you stay within the recommended dosage. However, there are a few things to look out for. One of them being sleep deprivation, the other being an uptick in your anxiety. I've experienced both of those. Taking caffeine too close to bedtime has caused my sleep to just get absolutely screwed, either not being able to fall asleep or poor quality of sleep. Secondly, an uptick in anxiety. Obviously, if you're someone who deals with intense anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis, an increase in caffeine can boost that anxiety up to unwanted levels. So with anxiety, we wanna make sure that we're attacking that underlying anxiety before we add caffeine into the equation and get the anxiety spinning out of control. Therapy, meditation, there are a number of different solutions to attempt to get your anxiety under control. Obviously, I cannot speak to your specific case, but if you're dealing with anxiety, I would advise you to seek help from a medical professional, find a therapist that you trust and work through that anxiety with them. That is a very basic overview of caffeine and its ergogenic aid properties. Again, if you want more, check the description. I'll link the study for you. It goes into so much more depth than I can get into in this video. Let's move on to the third and final myth of today's video. All right, this is a myth that I've seen gaining prevalence a little bit more and more with more people entering into the carnivore diet or, you know, more bodybuilders taking over social media. I see this popping up every now and again. Oh, well, high protein is going to give you high cholesterol, cardiac arrest. You're going to get heart disease. Okay, there is definitely some evidence based towards this, but I think people are misunderstanding the effect of protein and assuming that it's the protein that's causing the heart disease and not your protein source. So let's talk quickly about high protein diets. They have been shown to increase lean body mass as well as on a calorie deficit, 
retain that lean body mass so that you're losing fat as opposed to losing muscle. And for someone like me, that's incredibly important. I wanna keep as much strength, as much muscle as I can while I'm cutting my calories. So I have upped my protein and I have seen it in action. I, have, I haven't lost any strength. In fact, I've gained some strength on my most recent calorie cut. So anecdotally, I can tell you that that seems to be the case for me. Now, where people get into trouble is their protein sourcing. So normally when we think of protein, we think of beef, pork, eggs, all foods with higher cholesterol, right? So it's not so much the fact that a higher protein diet is causing heart disease or higher cholesterol. It's more so your protein sources. So instead of reaching for that fourth steak of the night, maybe we try and look for a pea protein supplement or a plant-based protein supplement that might allow us to get to our protein gram per day goal without boosting up that cholesterol and causing our cardiologists to lose their mind, okay? So again, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation between protein amount and heart disease. It is instead the concept of protein sourcing and that higher cholesterol leading to heart disease, right? Hope that cleared things up for you. Again, if you want more info, it's down in the description. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you found it enjoyable. Hope you found some educational content throughout, again, Check the description. There will be all the papers I talked about linked down below. Read them for yourself. Come to your own conclusions, right? I'm just a dude on the internet screaming at you. Figure your own stuff out. Why don't you go ahead and give a like to this video? One like equals one less Karen telling you that creatine is a steroid and it'll give you roid rage. I don't know. That was kind of dumb, but it's the best I got. Share this with somebody who's still trapped in believing some of these fitness myths. Let's do our part to dismantle them, to make the world a safer place for educational content, right? Guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Get strong, stay strong. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.